Okay. Yeah, the, the order is going to be Riesling, the Dry Rosé, and then the Stonebridge will be last. But you can drink in any order. You don't have to open all three. You don't have to open any of them. Um, so no, no pressure on anybody. <clears throat> Okay, starting with Riesling. Um, I think most of you are regulars here. You know what Riesling is, but I will give you just a quick rundown if you have forgotten. Um, originally from Germany, um, it is kind of Finger Lakes number one, uh, number one grape. It's what we're known for for the most part. Um, we are getting a little more known for sparkling wine and. Cap Franc as well, but Riesling is kind of our uh, kind of cornerstone. Um, we've had Riesling on the uh, the Atwater Farm since 1988. Um, that's, that would be our east-west one and two blocks, which we in the past have made uh, separate, for, uh, separate wines out of. Um, we may or may not do that this year. Kind of depends. And I believe it's our most planted grape. Uh, we're at nine and a quarter. Um, that number might be a little high as we've ripped out one block a couple of years ago. Um, so it might be more like eight and a quarter. Um, we, it comes in many styles at Outwater. We do dry and then we do this off dry that we just call Riesling. And then on very rare, uh, vintages, we will do a, uh, a dessert style, noble rot style, um, Riesling that, the last one we did was under the Celsius label, um, in 2019. Um, and maybe if I'm feeling really, uh, feeling like it and we have a lot of recent floating around, we'll do sparkling Riesling. Uh, we've done that once or twice. Um, so yeah, so pretty important grape for us. <clears throat> um, this is all of the kind of harvest info. Um, I'm not going to go down the list on this. Um, I will, note though that the the semi riesling that we're drinking now is um uh it's from our south blocks and there's a little bit of of c1 or central one block um it, it's like maybe five percent of the of the of the blend um but the cool thing about our the two south blocks um is that they are geisenheim clones and they ripen pretty early as you can see the harvest bricks is 18 which is pretty low um usually 20 would be ideal um it depends on the on the vintage but um <clears throat> they they get really fruity and they ripen at, at much lower bricks than um than normal and so for the past couple of years i've really been trying to use just these blocks um for semi and i think it makes a really nice semi dry um you get a lot of character um at, at a lower bricks than with with some of our other east west one or our or central blocks um the acidity on this one is is a touch lower um the vintage did bring us um slightly lower acid than than the year prior um on on the rieslings which was welcome um in my opinion uh ph was still low uh, the residual sugar on this is is about two and a half, which is the same as last year, um, similar in that range. I think going forward, I might bring it down just a touch, um, but that's always uh, always vintage dependent, always depending on the acid um, and the pH. And with this wine, I, I really like to keep it kind of around that nine and a half to 10% alcohol. Uh, this year, we kind of hit just, just under 10%. Um, I was very, I was... This this wine style is inspired by the Riesling uh, Cabinet style, um, Cabinet style Riesling. So that's that's an earlier pick in Germany. Um, they they will denote their Rieslings by when they picked and what what their their sugar level was. So there's Cabinet, there's Auslase, um, there's a few others. Um, and I always really enjoyed a nice cabinet style Riesling from Germany or Austria. Um, and if you, if it's done right, they can be very delicate and nuanced. Um, and so that's, what the kind of the style is going for, for this wine. Um, in the past, we had just picked 
semi dry. We just made semi dry. We would just ferment it dry and then back add sugar. Um, so you get this kind of 11 percent, 12 percent alcohol Riesling that also had sugar. And I just was never a big fan of it. Um, I just felt felt like the current uh, cabinet style was was just a better reflection of, of the site. And we and we have these south blocks that just just show really beautifully um, earlier in the season. Um, so that is that, um, this was, oh, something else I've been doing. So this was spontaneous. Um, uh, so, so the yeast was, was, was native. Um, we've been doing a pied de cuve. And for those of you who don't know what a pied de cuve is, um, it's basically like a sourdough starter for, for wine yeast. Um, we'll go out in the vineyard <clears throat> usually the first week of, um September and pick usually it's Pinot Green Gewürztraminer they tend to be the ripest it, it doesn't really matter what it is um we'll, we'll go pick those hand pick those those grapes maybe six to eight lugs worth um so maybe 200 pounds and we'll put them in a very small tank crush them basically I'll stomp on them um get them get the juices kind of flowing and um We'll put a lid on it and it'll start fermenting naturally. And then we'll use that, um, that starter, that pied de cuve to inoculate tanks. Um, I started to do that, uh, in 20, we still, we've been doing it kind of on and off 21 was a big, we, we kind of started doing multiple lots of wine, not just like the pet nat or the orange wines. Um, we did a few rosés and then in 22, we did even more. And then last year we did even more. Um, about 75% of our wines were, were with the P de Couve. And then this upcoming year, I'm pretty much planning on doing virtually a hundred percent. Um, it was, it was so, it was a great, it went, it went way better than I expected. Um, stuff fermented really well and I'm very happy with, with how that went. Um, so that's my spiel on the P de Couve. You'll see that pretty much on most most of the wines going forward, not everyone, and I'll explain. Um, I'll explain why in the next uh, in the next couple of slides for the rosé and um, and whatnot. Um, but the fermentation was it was in tank for this, um, and then direct press, no skin contact. Um, the aging on the semi dry is kind of depending on dependent on the year and when we can bottle. Um, my bottling room is unfortunately not or the, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. It's a building inside of a building. Like it was, it's, it, it was a, a building and it has a roof and gutters. And then at one point, another building was built around it. Um, so that small building where my bottling line is, is heated, but the exterior uh, warehouse surrounding that is not, uh, not heated. So I can't, I, I can't always bottle in January and February or something like that. So six months uh, in stainless steel. Um, no malactic. I actually think there's partial on this. Um, there is partial malactic. That was, uh, not necessarily intentional, but also not intentional, uh, not unintentional. Um, I let the wines kind of figure out what they're going to do. Um, and if they go through malactic, they go through malactic. Um, yeah. So that's the Riesling. Um, this is again, it's very you know, kind of quaffable. Um, got a lot of nice fruit, um, very kind of nuanced Riesling. Um, and one, one of my favorite styles, I will admit though, it is one of the most challenging wines, I think in the cellar to make, um, you really got to get that, that balance of, of sugar and acidity, right. Um, uh, and yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Riesling. Any questions on the Riesling? And you can just, uh, no need, unless you're shy, uh, you can just verbally ask, uh, since there's, there's only a handful of us, if you have a question, um, instead of typing it in the chat, um. So do you have anybody have questions on the, uh, the, the Riesling here? Going once, going twice. No, oh, Paul, you think? No, just want to say it's good. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Uh, All right. That's uh that'll be that for the Riesling. I think I covered most of the important stuff. Um, okay. And just to recap on the 23 vintage, um, I know we, we, many of you, maybe all of you were here for the last, um, the last virtual in March. Um, but it, the overall, the vintage was, was, was quite good. Um, not 
obviously not as extracted as 22, um, not as hot. Um, I consider it more of a classic year, at least as far as Atwater's fruit went. Um, I, the acids were on the lower side, which is great, especially in the Riesling. Um, this was 6.7, which is, which is pretty low for semi-dry. And then I think our dry is around seven, maybe seven and a half, um, which is great. Usually you're seeing, you can sometimes see numbers in eight, eight and a half, nine. That's a lot of acid. Um, there was the frost in, um, in May that did some serious damage to some hybrids. Um, so the hybrids such as the Vignoles and the hybrids for Stonebridge Red and Stonebridge White, those had some, that had some really elevated acid because the, the shoots that were out in May, um, basically got frozen and, and died. And so the, the, the vines had to, um, push secondary or tertiary buds. Um, and so those hybrids were a little, uh, little late, um, and didn't ripen as, as well as, uh, some of the vinifera that pop out a little later in the season, um, that kind of survived the frost. Um, so that's the 23 vintage uh, overall. I'm, I'm, it's, it was a pretty solid vintage. Um, so on to the rosé. Now this is, um, this is an interesting one. So Barbera, um, some of you may know Barbera. Others may have no clue what it is. Um, it is not common in the Finger Lakes. There's only one person who grows it, and that's Three Brothers Winery up on the uh, northeast side of Seneca Lake. Um, and we needed some fruit for rosé. And we're pretty strict about not using our own Cab Franc and just our reds for rosé they're really nice red wines and it's it's uh we kind of decided that we rather give people estate reds and non-estate rosé than less estate reds and also make estate rosé if that makes it having less of both and having them both be estate um there's there's a lot of wonderful vineyards in the finger lakes a lot of wonderful wineries that grow great fruit um and especially for something like rosé um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the, the greatest and the best fruit for that. Um, so we found the Barbera, not to disrespect the, the three brothers Barbera, um, but Barbera in the Finger Lakes is, should, in my opinion, be for Rosé and that's it. Um, it's, it's native to, native to Italy. Um, you can, you'll find it under Barbera to Alba or something like that. It, it's, it's grown in a few, uh, few parts in primarily Northwestern Italy, um, Barbera de Alba is, is a popular, um, whatever popular term. Um, it's a big, it is a super big wine, a uh, lot of alcohol. So a lot of, a lot of sugar, a lot of bricks accumulation, um, and a lot of acid. So you can imagine that reds in the finger lakes are already kind of tough to get really high sugars on. Um, and acids already tend to be tend to be elevated on Finger Lakes, all Finger Lakes wines. Um, Barbera is those things are really elevated. Um, so it has a lot of this wine has a lot of alcohol. We'll get to the numbers in a minute, and it has a boatload of acid. Um, so I wasn't thrilled about getting this. Um, I will admit, not to you know kind of pat myself in the shoulder, but I think we made a pretty good wine out of it. Um, we worked with what we got, uh, with what we had, and we blended it with the Blau Frankish. Um, if you're not familiar with Blau Frankish, um, native to Austria, a very juicy, makes very juicy reds, lots of blackberries and blueberry. Um, it can pick up some chocolate and spice as well. Um, we've had it at Atwater for a long time. Um, we will, for you Blau Frankish fanatics, we will have a red Blau Frankish, barrel-aged red Blau Frankish this year. Um, we have not had one since 2020, um, so I'm excited for that. But back to the rosé. Um, so just to I'll highlight the first thing really quick, if you look at the Barbera numbers, 25.3 um, bricks. Wow, uh, that is really high for the Finger Lakes uh, for a red wine. And and I mean, this is late October. This is a last wine we our last grapes that we got in was 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 this Barbera, and it was at 25 um almost 25 and a half bricks um 
So you'll you'll notice that uh, the ABV is approaching 14%. Uh, that's a boozy rosé. <laughs> um, and if you have a spry eye, you'll also see that there's uh, quite a bit of residual sugar. Um, so if this went dry, this would probably be 14.5%, uh, a 14.5% dry rosé, which in my opinion would not have been very good. Um, so we stopped this wine um, at about 1%, um, mostly because it was getting too alcoholic. The acidity is high. It's at 8.8. .8. That's, that's pretty high. Um, and the balance was honestly, the balance was there. Um, so I was afraid that it was going to get too alcoholic and it tasted nice. Um, and so we stopped it. Um, the, the Blau Frankish came in a little later. Um, we had some leftover from our Cab Franc Blau, um, Rosé. Uh, we only, we didn't use all the Blau Frankish. We just used basically half of it. Um, and then that other half, we did a try with the Barbera and it worked, it worked out well. And so that's how you got the 82 Barbera and 18% Blau Frankish, um, not something I think you're going to see again. So if you like it, I'm sorry, buy a lot of it um, because I don't ever want to work with Barbera again. And regardless of whether or not I like it, um, three brothers did express that they will be keeping the Barbera next year. Um, I don't know why they let it go this year. They usually don't. Um, but I think it just happened to be happened to be a vintage that they didn't want all of it. Um, and so we ended up getting it. So don't uh, don't look forward to this again. Um, if you like it, get it while you can. We have a lot of it. Um, not a lot, a lot of it, but um, we have a decent amount of it. 20 cases times 12. Yes. So thank you. I was just about to look for the case <laughs> count and it's not here. Um, oh, I, are we not muted? Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I just unmuted because I, I was, was going to ask a question. Sorry. No, you perfect timing. Uh, yes, Paul. So uh, maybe I missed it. Maybe you said, but the Barbara, you said Barbara came from three brothers. Did you get it as juice? Did you get it as grapes? No, Did so we, we got it as, uh, we got it as, as, um, as grapes. Okay. Um, we, we, we did all the work on it. We, we pressed it. Um, it was direct, direct press. I mean, it, it was in, it was machine picked. So it was in bins for probably an hour until it got to, okay. got to us. Cause it, it, they're about four, maybe not now. Yeah. I'd probably say because an hour. You, because your pressing says on day of harvest, and I thought, well, they must have harvested it unless you helped them harvest it too. No, they um, they harvested it and then they they and just, then delivered it like that day. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, yeah. they're about forty minutes away. Yeah, that's usually well, I know how where they goes. are. It's just I didn't know that you guys work that fast up there. Yeah, <laughs> if you um, if usually if you buy grapes, um, unless you're like a hundred miles away or something, um, it'll be same day delivery. Um, okay. Unless you specify that you don't want that or that the winery has a capability to put those grapes in refrigeration or, or something like that. Um, but most of the time it's same day. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was direct press, like all of our other, um, most, almost all of our other rosés. And aging was just a couple months. We bottled. So I should a... save a bottle because it'll be uh, worth a whole lot of money because you'll never do it again, right? Uh, if, <laughs> hey, if you think that you can invest in a bottle, um, I would love to see your returns on <laughs> on that. Um, but yeah, probably not going to happen again. Um, never, you know, say, never say never. Never say I won't say I won't say never because a lot of people like this, and I am. I have come around to working with it again, um, but it's definitely not the first thing on my list um, as far as rosé, um, rosé grapes. Um, so I understand why you only aged it three months. If 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 with that much sugar, it, yeah, it could have been a very alcoholic. Yeah, it was getting too it was getting too alcoholic, and finally it hit in a nice equilibrium of acid sugar and alcohol. Um, and and we we stopped it and the blau frankish did help tone that down um there's not a, a lot of blau, there's not a lot of blau in it no that the blau mostly just helped bring down the acidity and oh, the okay. alcohol a little bit and a little bit it just brought everything down a little bit um 
that that was i mean we're talking fractions we're, we're it, it probably was maybe 14 percent alcohol before the blau frankish and now it's 13 7 um that's still pretty high for a Oh yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. This is your. Um, if you want to drink one bottle and get really drunk, you just drink this. Um, so yeah, well, so that's, that's what I'll save my bottle for. Yes. <laughs> save save the bottle for a day that's really hot out, and you've been like doing a today. lot of work. Like, you mean you like haven't ninety had, today? <laughs> and you haven't had anything to eat, and then have oh, this fuck. bottle, and then you'll be really oh, really yeah. drunk. Um, then, then go to bed. Then go to bed. Yeah. Drink a and, yeah. two out of hill and water. There you go. Um, <laughs> all right. So I guess that's that for this. This is again right. a, a little bit of a um kind of unicorn wine for us. Um, but sometimes it's fun to have these little things. 2023 was a a, a vintage of a lot of uh well, I'll call them unicorn wines. Um, a lot of just interesting projects that that kind of were presented to us uh we george was went crazy with the grapes and um i was was kind of accepted them with open arms um so when he asked me if we wanted to buy some get some some of this or some of that i just said sure um and then felt the pain later um, when i had to make wine out of those grapes um, but this one worked out um quite well i think um and then yeah, so I did talk about the yeast earlier. Um, so this is this was lab yeast. Um, in 2023, I decided to use lab yeast for all of our um, non-estate fruit. There, there's really no reasoning behind that. Um, and so next year, I'm I'm gonna. I guess the reasoning I think is is I don't know that fruit and I don't know kind of the state it's in and, and how it's gonna how it's gonna ferment so i felt safer with with some labbies that might be in theory a little stronger um but i think going forward and and the blau just got got labbies because we had some leftover from last year um i didn't really want to just put it in the trash because that stuff's expensive um so yeah that's that's the yeast um reasoning for the yeast in this wine um yeah there are oh. 200 cases left. Oh, okay. I just checked inventory, so. Perfect. Wes, um, one, question on, one question on the rosé. You said you're not anxious to work with Barbera again. Yes. Is that because of the sugar and acids, or is there something yes. else? It doesn't, it doesn't ripen, in my opinion. I think 25 bricks for, for Barbera is actually not very high. You you can see some, some Italian Barberas easily approach I shouldn't say it's not going to get much higher than that, but I bet you in, in Italy, you could probably see 26, 27 bricks. Um, and there's probably a touch of residual sugar on that Barbera. Um, it's more that it's more about the acid than it's more about the acid than the sugar. Um, in Italy, they can overnight their Mediterranean climate will just um, kind of tame that acid a little more and it'll drop out. Um, so you're not going to have an eight gram eight and a half gram per liter acid in your wine um or nobody would drink it um that's why the residual sugar is there as well um so i've had that barbera from three brothers in in its red barrel aged state it's fine it's it's just not something that i think does well in the finger lakes and is really reflective of the Finger Lakes um, that I know it's a little ironic because we grow Syrah, but honestly, I think Syrah has a, has a better place in the Finger Lakes than Barbera does. Um, because mostly also because it's uh, with vintage variation, 2023 was a decent year. I couldn't imagine that Barbera in 2021. I mean, my, my God, that acid must be 10 or 11 grams. Um, I, I don't know what Aaron over at three brothers possibly did with that Barbera, but I honestly don't want to know. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why it's, it's just, it's just not, it just doesn't do it for me. Thanks. Um, and it's too unpredictable. Yeah. So on to the stone bridge red. Um, this is Foch and Noiré. Yes. Um, so Marichal Foch is a French American hybrid. Um, that is still grown in France. There are some small, um, 
small pockets of France that that do grow these hybrids. Most of them are um, uh, non AOC, so so non. Uh, uh, what's the word? Um, they they don't have a uh, uh, a designated name, so it's not like Burgundy or or Bordeaux. These are like wines that are being made for like Vin de France or, or just a very vague um vague wines there are there are some um some hybrids in some some aoc um areas but primarily i believe most of the hybrids are just in these random pockets kind of on the outskirts of of major wine producing um areas um it's a nice we've been using foch for a while um for we used to have foch on the farm uh, we had some very old foch i think from the 80s it is no longer uh, no longer on our farm. Um, unfortunately, we've ripped out all of our hybrids and replaced them with Riesling and Cab Franc primarily. Um, but it's it's a hybrid red, um, so a little higher acid, higher alcohol, uh, higher sugar within reason. Nothing like the Barbera, but um, you'll see 23, 24 bricks on on Foch, um, and also still have seven kind of seven to eight grams of acid. Um, before fermentation um very kind of lush deep makes very deep kind of wines lots of black fruit um black cherry smoke and vanilla you can get um as well most of that might probably come from barrels um <clears throat> and then the noire is an interesting one we we started working with this in 2022 um i call this the christmas uh the christmas wine um, it kind of just reminds me of, of there's like this pine and kind of green, green pepper is probably what it is, but there, I feel like there's some kind of very just Christmas aromas to it. Um, you probably won't pick that up too much on, on, uh, the Stonebridge red, but, um, it's an interesting, it, it adds a dimension definitely, um, to, uh, to the Foch. Um, and it is a, a, a New York ag. So Cornell, it is a Cornell grape. Um, the crosses of what it is aren't on here, but I imagine it was something unfamiliar to, to most of us. Um, and little tidbit, uh, was not available until 2006, which I did not know. Um, I thought that was around for a little longer than clearly it's, it originated in the seventies. Um, but, uh, was not available until not that long ago. Um, so the Stonebridge red, as many as you know, um, changes every year. Um, this, yeah, every year it's something a little different. It's usually Foch, um, Foch based, although this 2023 vintage is not the case. I'll get into the 23 vintage in a minute. Um, Stonebridge in the past has always kind of been our kind of entry level kind of easier drinking um hybrid based table wine um usually had a little bit of sugar this only has half percent um so four 4.3 grams just under half percent which is which is not um by no means uh that much sugar um we've been toning the sugar down quite a bit um over the last couple of years um it's it's i'm trying to get out of that um, kind of easy drinking wine, although it's nice. Um, I just think it's a little boring. Um, no disrespect to this wine. Um, it's good. It has, it's, it definitely serves its purpose. Um, but so, uh, got a little residual, um, lower, lower ABV as well. We have not been capitalizing. Um, we did not capitalize in 2022 and I am basically, forbid capitalization um going forward um so none of the wines none of the wines will ever be capitalized so you'll see a lot of a lot of our reds maybe kind of in that 11 to 12 percent alcohol range instead of 12 and a half to 13 um again vintage dependent um and it was only eight days um eight days in oh this was tank yeah so we, we did this in a tank last year um and then we pressed it off so we do pump overs when it's in a tank instead of punch downs. Um, and then 15 days in bins for the Noiré. Um, they were aged in neutral French and American, kind of normal, normal at water style. 
um, and then they were blended, um, blended prior to bottling. And we did our whatever trials. Um, most likely, we did our sugar trial, um, sugar trial then. And yeah, that's kind of Stonebridge Red. Uh, I mean, going forward, um, I did say that Stonebridge Red changes, you know, changes every year. Um, and the 2023 vintage is no, no different. Um, there's actually no Foch for the first time, I think, ever. Um, we were not able to get Foch from our um, uh, main Foch supplier. Um, actually, our old Foch supplier, Purplefoot. Um they sold all their vineyards and they are no longer available um, to buy Foch from. So we had to find somebody else. And I, I said uh, that a lot of the hybrids got hit with the freeze in May last year. And our Foch, Foch vineyard uh, across the lake uh, in Dundee got hit real bad. Um, and we were unfortunately not able to get any Foch from them. But instead we got Leon Melo, which is uh, Foch's Technically, it's genetically like its sister, or, or, or they're related genetically. Um, they're crossed from like one of the its parents or the same or something. Um, and we've been trying to get Leon Malo for a while as well. Um, so anyway, the 2023 vintage, which will be out relatively soon, um, maybe maybe by the end of uh, end of the summer, is completely different from this as well. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yes. Stonebridge Red is always constantly, uh, constantly in rotation of different, uh, different grapes, um, and yeah, I think that's it for Stonebridge Red. Any burning questions about that? Maybe, nope. Okay, um, more Stonebridge pictures. Oh yes, I can't, I can't not. Uh, talk about the the winemaker dinners. Um, we've got three this summer. So if you're a long term, a long time at water person, um, you'll be asking, what are the winemaker dinners? I thought you had vineyard table dinners. Uh, yes, we used to do the vineyard table. Um, it has gotten unfortunately just so out of hand. And when the weather doesn't work, we can't postpone. So we've just entirely moved all the dinners inside. Um. So they will be the same as same, same idea. Um, they will just not be in the vineyard, unfortunately. Um, but we have three. Um, there are some fun wines on there. Um, I tried to get a, a vintage, a vintage wine for each one, um, at least for part one course and each dinner. Um, our caterer Dean Lane is phenomenal. Um, these are on the website. If you are curious about the dinners and, and the menu. Um, the wine I don't think is up there. Um, but if you're really dying to know what wines are going to be at which dinners, you can just email me and I will send you the wine list. Um, and yeah, that's that. Um, is there any other kind of general questions um, outside of... Um, How do you say that great? Marisol Foch. Foch. Marisol is that Foch. A, is that a new varietal? I'm not familiar with that. No. Um, hold on. Uh, no. There. Um, no, Foch has been around for a while. Um, we. I think it's been around since the 80s or 90s, would oh, be my okay. guess. Um, so just restaurants don't carry it? <laughs> No, you're, okay. you're, you're, you're you not buy a buy. bottle of it. It's usually mixed. You mix something. it. It's usually like yeah. in like a table red or a yeah. Blend. It's usually in a table red. We did do a varietal in 2008. Um, we still have a few bottles floating around. It's actually pretty good. Um, oh. still, um, we do open one of those from time to time. Um, or I do just, you know, I because. happen to be there. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, we could work something out. I'm like, where's uh, Wes? Where's Wes? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Fo Foch has been around for a while. I like we like Foch. We just we just uh, don't get enough of it to make um, to make a variety out of, and then it clashes with the Stonebridge Red, and then yeah. I like the Stonebridge Red. Good, thank oh, you. As we said at the beginning of this, it went very well with our ribeyes tonight. Yeah. I will be curious what you think of the next the twenty twenty three Stonebridge Red. It's a little different. 
Uh, it's got a little more, acid. more mixture. I, I saw in the newsletter. Yes. Today. Uh, and, that's yeah, that's less. There is more mixture. Um, it is more of a blend. It's just more drier. of a variety of, of wine yes. is what I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's Leon Chancellor Noire and then a, a little Cab Franc. Oh, um, Chancellor. Um, yeah. Oh, this looks like it's delicious. Oh, Eric says brownies would be good with this too. You could have dessert with that. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, I see you itching to ask a question. Oh, yeah. yeah here, see, somebody else. Yeah, I want to circle back something you said earlier sure. about your opposition to capitalization. Given mm -hmm. that, you know, we're we're in a pretty variable part of the country in terms of weather. Yes. What does that suggest you do if we get a rerun of a year like 2021? Um, you a know, lot of those no, you know, 2021, believe it or not, um, we had a really, really good um growing degree to accumulation. So we had it was really warm. It was just pouring rain. Um, so wines were actually reasonably ripe. Um, we reds were 20 in the twenties, which if, if okay. they're in the twenties, I'll take it. Um, for reference, the cab Franc this year in 23, I, I know I said it was really good year. Um, I still stand by that. Uh, our cab Franc only came in at 20 and a half bricks, um, which is low. Um, but our acid was not high. I, I I really judge a wine or grapes based off of of their acid. Um, if their sugar's not high, that sucks. Um, but if their acid's low, to me that says that fruit is is pretty ripe. Um, so the bricks is just not a huge concern for me. I I I think you know, and and there will be there are winemakers who are infinitely more experienced than I am who will tell you otherwise and they might be correct um I don't think alcohol is that important yes it, it is you know but the difference between like 11 and a half percent and 12 is negligible sure I don't want cab franc to come in at at, at 19 bricks and be 10 percent alcohol that's not really what I'm going you know that that's different and if that was the case yeah I, I, I might capitalize or I would just harass my vineyard manager and be like, Chris, uh, I don't know what to tell you. We're not picking <laughs> until, until that camp rock is 20 bricks, man. I don't do something. Um, but you, that has all, that has never happened. Um, and our cab franc, our current cab franc that is producing, um, has, it has a lot of viruses. Um, and so it tends not to ripen bricks wise as much. Um, we are in the transition of, of, we have just planted like six more acres of Cab Franc and we're eventually in four or five years going to rip out the current Cab Franc and, and probably replace it with more Cab Franc. Um, so our, our Cab Franc already doesn't ripen um, super well. And I won't lie, I've, I've had some vintage Atwater wines and, and I, I feel like the alcohol, you can tell, it, it just pokes through for older wines. And I feel like you can tell when it's, was was put there intentionally um and again most people aren't aging our wines for 10 years um but uh i i don't i just don't see the need for it and i think the 23 vintage will prove kind of prove that to me that i have 11 percent alcohol cab franc and it's i might kind of be uh what's the word um be eating my words here in, in six months when, <laughs> when it's on the shelf but it's one of my favorite Cab Francs, and I love the 22, and it's nothing, nothing like the 22 Cab Franc. It's delicate and nuanced, um, but it has this mouthfeel that I have not tasted in a lot of our reds, probably ever. Um, just the, the, the highlight of 2023 vintage is mouthfeel. Don't know why. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out to recreate it because all the wines just – at least right now, just sit in your mouth for 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 minutes after you swallow them, um, even the reds. And so that's why I, I just wasn't too concerned. I just wasn't worried about the alcohol. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to really reflect the vintage as, as much as I can. Um, and I think there's always something, you can always find something nice about a wine regardless of the vintage. Um, yeah, the 21s didn't have the body 
and the texture and the color of 2020. But I quite liked the 21 cab franc. And I was, trust me, I was yeah. beating the shit out of that wine when I was making it and bottling it. I thought this is horrible. This is sucks. Um, or look at the Simvoli. I bottled the Simvoli and I thought this is the worst wine I've ever made. I I, I have to quit. This is horrible. <laughs> People love that wine. Um, and, and, and I like it too. It's great. It took a while to come around, but I, and I think that's, that's also the thing is there's a lot of winemakers and, and they're trained conventionally. And I was of course trained conventionally and they, they want to make a great wine. I feel like this is an American thing too. Not a, not a, a European thing, but we want to make it good right now. And we want to push it out onto the shelves and it needs to be good this second. Um, and I think with wine, that's just not how it works. Um, I hated the, the 21 Simvoli and then eight months later, it was fantastic. I hated the Pinot Gris. It came around. I hated the Gruner and it came around. Um, I think it's just, so, so I just, I really kind of want the wines to just be what they're going to be. And I know if they're going to be bad, I know if a wine's flawed or, or something like that, there's no excuse for that, but, um, I really want to reflect the vintage and I think no matter the vintage, you can still get a wine that is reflective of its place, the year it was grown, who made it and still be good too. Um, that's, that's, that's my, that's my uh, hard take on capitalization. Um, oh, that's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Wes, well, Amanda can confirm this. When I tried to get three more than 21 Cab Francs, we, there was a oh. kind of a mix up. So oh. I eventually got them. Oh, good. Right, right, Amanda? Yes. Yeah, you were <laughs> the wrong one, but we got it to you. Mm -hmm. Good. Get them while you can. They're gone, I think. They are gone. They've been well, gone. They are, they're, they're gone. They're gone. You they're said gone. earlier 22. about not everybody holds on to their bottles. I have one Cab oh. Franc for every year from 2013. I know you do. I know. I was going to say, you're an exception. Um, and we appreciate it because somebody has to taste, you know, someday you're going to do like a 10 year vertical. Oh, yeah. Um, you used to do some of the, well, not you so much per, per yes. individually, but but these Zoom tastings, you've yeah. done the, the verticals. And there We've was been, a, we yeah, have moved some of them those. have been real fun. They were. We've moved most of them to in person. We did one. Actually, we did a cab front vertical. Sorry. <laughs> um, a couple of months I, ago. I can do my own. I'm not I was going to say, you you can do your own. So who cares if you missed it? Um, you have all the wines. They were mostly recent. Uh, there was nothing like really old. Um, we did. But just to back you up, that 21 cab franc was was amazing. Yeah, it's, not at first, but after after it sat in the bottle for a while, it, it was yeah, so good. It just it just needed yeah. a minute. I mean, that was all. The 21 vintage was just that's how it was. Um, and I I think going forward, we made so much wine in 2023. I'm hoping we're all hoping to get to a point where we're not rushing wines out to you guys. Um, Given Thank the weather you. this year, we're wondering what the 24s are going to taste like in the year. <laughs> <laughs> Have well, you been uh, getting like no rain either? No, we've been getting we've been getting rain, uh, not uh, a lot, have... um, but we've got some. So far, it's it's looking okay. It's been a little humid. Um, disease pressure has been uh, maybe a <laughs> seven out of ten. So 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 not great, but not horrible. Um, but we well, can now confirm the Stonebridge is good with the brownies too. With brownies, I was going to say. <laughs> it's better um, with steak. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the 24 vintage is looking good so far. Cro fingers crossed. Um, shoot, shoot growth has been really nice. Um, it, we had a lot of rain in early May, mid-May. Yeah, early May. Um, and that did a lot of um did a, yeah we had most of our main rain in the first 10 days in yeah. fact the first the third was like several inches yes we had and, we had and then rain. then it's been dry since yeah it's been on and off for us we've had some light a light showers, showers. Yeah, um, not, not but it's getting hot next week into the 90s which yeah it's hot right now yeah. here uh, we'll, we'll mid 90s see. monday through friday yep yeah, we'll we'll see how fruit set is coming up. It'll either be really good for fruit set or it's going to be bad. Um, so <laughs> we'll see. It might be uh, it might be a lower uh, a lower crop year, but 
higher quality. We'll see. It's too, it's way too soon to tell. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of, I think the wrap up, is there any other, uh, any other questions I can ask you or answer right now while you're all here in front of me? No. Okay. Uh, I'm getting some thumbs up. So I guess that'll be that. Um, thank you guys. Cheers. Um, I will see you hopefully in the tasting room or not that I work the tasting room, but you know, um, if you're around, just I'll, I, I might be around. Um, we just uh, ask for you, right? Just, uh, yeah, just <laughs> ask. Worst case scenario, I tell you to you go. Or George, away, you know. one of them, you, yeah. Oh, well, George, you'll be seeing George doesn't leave the tasting room. So if you're looking for George, you just he's, you he's go to the fine. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah, he's he is never not in the tasting room anymore. He is currently in the tasting <laughs> room right now, making cocktails and pouring wine, oh, um, good. spinning records, so, all that stuff. Spinning yeah. records. Yeah. I think we have a band tonight. It is it is live music night. Um, oh, it's Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. For some reason, we keep doing these on Thursdays, but I haven't said anything. Um, so we have a good local crowd on Thursday. We do. Yeah, burger, uh, food truck, sir. Uh, I know. I saw that. Um, so, yeah. I thank you. You're welcome. Well, thanks you for everything. Night. Of course. Thank you. If you have thank any you. questions uh, later, you know, you know where to just send an email or something like that and we'll get to you. So, all right. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Nice.